speech is right. Uh, can anybody hear me? Yeah. yeah. I mean, thank you for coming out. I know it's not pleasant weather. Um, you know, generally it's the start of summer, right? All those wonderful sales that are going on that we go see to. Of course, that's obviously not why we're here. And, and you know, one of the problems I feel like we're dealing with, which I personally deal with, is like how to make it tangible. How do we feel that? You know, less and less Americans serve nowadays, so the only way I can kind of make it tangible for you is telling you about somebody I know that passed away. Um, <coughs> when I was 23, Sergeant Landis Wayne Garrison, also age 23, died. He was a resident of the state of Illinois, though like me, he had been living in Iraq for approximately a year, a year when he died, which was some 30 feet or more away from me. What's not, it's not important how he died, at least not today. What's important is how he lived. In addition to enlisting in the Army National Guard, he, shorter than me, glasses, blonde hair, he joined his local fire department as a volunteer before graduating from high school. Unwaveringly optimistic, this young man would look at the Iraqi sun, or not sun, sand, and imagine a beach. I, I couldn't do that. Um, growing up, he often helped his neighbors, worked on their cars, he shoveled their snow, he loved playing baseball, he loved his Chevy pickup truck, and even though this is Illinois, while off duty, he liked being a cowboy, right? Uh, not, not the part of Illinois I was from, but either way, you, you kind of get that this is a friendly guy, very outgoing, borderline hyperactive. And it's people like him we want to remember today. Because it's people like him we lost. People who make that sacrifice that so few Americans are willing to risk nowadays. So please, when you think about it, it's generally a younger person that gave the ultimate sacrifice. As uh, Assemblymember Joe and I said, wherever he is, is you know, it's not just him that suffers; it's the family members who suffer. So even though it's cold, it sucks to be out here. Thank you for making that sacrifice at a minimum. Please remember these people. It's very important. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Veteran Joseph Thompson, President of 49 Precinct Council. What do you mean, oh wow? <laughs> Actually, I love the ring. So it's a pleasure to be out here. And it's uh, a double pleasure uh, for the reason that we are out here. Our country was built on dedication, appearance, mm -hmm. and uh, recognition of our Constitution. Mm -hmm. It was built on sacrifice, and that's what our boys have done here. I know when I joined, and I, I think I've told you this before, I knew I was going to join the military when I was five years old, because they were protecting me when I was five years old. Um, nothing can happen, and this country will always be strong as long as we're always together. As long as we remember the Constitution, we remember fair play. We will always be strong. There is no country in the world that can beat us from outside, but they can't beat us if they get inside. And that's one of the things that our boys fought for. They fought for this country to survive, to be stronger every day, and to protect our citizens. And all I have to say is, I God bless the people we lost, God bless the people who served, and I'm so proud of every one of them. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Veteran Earl Mark Jr. Mark Mark. I'm going to try this uh, microphone. It seems to work and not work. Um, okay. First of all, I want everybody to remember the fallen, remember the POWs, remember the MIAs, okay? And remember your fellow veterans, because like people have said already today, 
all veterans have given some, and some have given all. And we're here to remember the people have given all. I'd like to read a, a little poem. I do not know your name, nor from what battle you died. I do not know your home, nor the tears that were cried. I do not know where you rest, nor the promises, nor the promises broke. I do not know your uniform and the fears that lay unspoken. But I know your spirit exists, and the courage is admired, and your sacrifice is honored by each soul that is inspired. And I offer you from, from my heart, and I offer you from my heart, the guardian, guardians unknown, for offering ourselves for all of us, that we may keep freedom in our home. Bless you. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, one more stat. In the Bronx, there are 250,000 veterans. That's approximately every six person. Wow. So, definitely, uh, from the bottom of my heart, don't wish me a, a happy Memorial Day. Uh, do me a favor, welcome them home, or give them a blessed Memorial Day. You can say that to them, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Veteran Crescenzo Tristikistan. Thank you. Thank you all for being here today. And look around, I'm sure that I see plenty of veterans here. And I want to thank Silvio Mazzella, who's also a veteran, for keeping this tradition going. Every year. I know we have Al Casillo's family here. And we want to thank all of our representatives who support the veterans and, of course, support our community. We thank them so much. Jeff Klein, Senator Klein, Mark Joni, and others. And with that, I just want to say thank you very much for remembering. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. Now I'd like to ask the President of Morris Park, Al D'Angelo, and Vice President Frank to Ms. Keith, Bob, John Hall, Stonewall, and see that's color. Thank you.